Good afternoon, class. Today we're going to practice evaluating exponents. So we have two examples here. We have negative 4 in parentheses squared, and we have negative 4 without parentheses squared. In the first case, we have an exponent outside of a set of parentheses, which means that we're going to square everything inside of the parentheses. So what this really means is negative 4 times negative 4. Okay. If you were to put that into your calculator, negative 4 times negative 4 should give you positive 16. Okay. In our second example, we have an exponent and a negative number, but no parentheses. That means that that exponent is tied strictly to the number it is next to and not to the negative sign. So this means negative 4 times 4. 4 times 4 is 16, and the negative sign is outside of that, so we have negative 16. Okay? So these are not the same thing. Whenever you have parentheses, you're squaring everything inside of the parentheses. If you don't have parentheses, that negative sign is something separate. Okay, let's try another example. Okay, 3 divided by 8 raised to the 0 power, 3 divided by 8 raised to the 1 power, and 3 divided by 8 squared. Okay. In the first example, we have 3 divided by 8 raised to the 0 power. Hopefully you remember from the math review packet that anything raised to the 0 power equals 1. So in this case, 3, to the, 3 divided by 8 to the 0 power is equal to 1. Okay. Whenever you have an exponent outside a set of parentheses like that, that re, especially with a fraction, that means 3 to the 1 divided by 8 to the 1. Anything raised to the 1 power is just itself. So this is 3 to the 1 power is 3. 8 to the 1 power is 8. So it's just 3 divided by 8. 3 divided by 8 is 0.375. Okay. In the final example, we again have a parentheses and an exponent outside. So we have 3 squared divided by 8 squared. Okay, 3 squared is 3 times 3 which is 9. 8 squared is 8 times 8, which is 64. So we have 9 divided by 64. 9 divided by 64 is 0.141. Okay. So again, whenever you have a set of parentheses and you have a fraction inside of those parentheses, you are going to raise each thing inside to that power. Okay. Our next example what happens when you have a number raised to a power times that same number raised to a different power? Okay. So notice here that our bases, the twos, are the same, and our exponents here are different. So whenever you have a base, okay, a base that is the same, and then you have those exponents that are different. If the bases are being multiplied by each other, this is the product rule. When the bases are multiplied by each other, we add the exponents. So the way that we often write this, if we were to write this in algebraic notation, is a to the m times a to the n is equal to a to the m plus n. So again, you're going to add the exponents. So in our example here, we have 2 to the third, 2 cubed times 2 to the negative 5. We are going to keep the a part, which is the 2, and then we're going to add the exponents. And 3 plus negative 5 should give you negative 2. So the answer is 2 to the negative 2 power. Okay, let's try another example. What if we have 4 to the third times 4 to the sixth? Again, note that our bases are the same, 4 and 4. They are being multiplied, and we have these exponents up here. So again, we have 4 times 4, that is our a part, so 4, 
And our exponents are our m plus n, so we have 3 plus 6 is 9. So our answer is 4 to the 9th. Okay, let's just do one more example. Let's do 3 to the 3rd times 3 to the 3rd. Okay, one more time. Note that my bases are identical. I have two 3s. They are being multiplied by each other. And then I have my two exponents up here. So again, we have a to the m times a to the n equals a to the m plus n. So we have our a is our 3. And then our m plus n is our 3 plus 3. That is 3 to the 6th. Okay. All right. Let's keep going. Okay. What about when we have something like this? 4 to the 9th divided by 4 to the 3rd. So now, instead of having two bases that are the same being multiplied by each other, we have two bases that are the same. We have these two 4s, but they are in fraction form. They're being divided. And we have our exponents here. What do we do in this scenario? Well, we say in this scenario that we have a to the m divided by a to the n, that is equal to a to the m minus n. Okay, so our a's are our 4's, okay? And then we have our m's and our n's, which are our 9's and our 3's. So 9 minus 3 is 6. So the answer to this is 4 to the 6th. Okay, let's try one more. Let's do 3 to the 3rd divided by 3 to the 6th, okay? Again, my bases, my 3s, this time they are being divided rather than multiplied. My exponents are 3 and 6. So we have a to the m minus n, 3 minus 6 is negative 3. So the answer to this is 3 to the negative 3rd. Okay, let's try one more. Okay, our next example, we have 1 divided by 7 in parentheses to the third power times 1 divided by 7 to the negative 4. We have two rules going on here. We have two bases that are the same, 1 over 7, and they are being multiplied by each other. So that is the rule that says a to the m times a to the n equals a to the m plus n. We also have the rule where we have a fraction inside of a set of parentheses raised to a power. Okay, let's deal with the first part first. So let's deal with this part first. So again, we are going to add the exponents since our bases are the same. So we're going to take our exponents here, 3 and negative 4, and add those together. So 3 uh, plus negative 4 is negative 1. So to simplify this a little bit, we have 1 over 7 now raised to the negative 1 power. Now we have the second part here, which says that x over y to the z power is equal to x to the z power divided by y to the z power. So now we have 1 to the negative 1 divided by 7 to the negative 1. If we were to clean this up, 1 to the negative 1 is 1. 7 to the negative 1 is 0 0.1428571429. Let's round that. And then if you were to take that, take the 1 and divide by that, you should get an answer of 7. Okay. All right, let's do one more. Okay, let's do one more. We have 64 raised to the 1 half power. Okay, whenever you have a number raised to an exponent that is a fraction, this is the same thing as saying the square root of 64. Or for example, if you had a number like C729 raised to the 1 third power, this is the same thing as the cubed root. 
okay? Or if you had, for example, 1,296 raised to the fourth power. Yeah, it's the same thing as the fourth root. Okay? To solve these, you simply type these into your calculator. The square root function is fairly easy on an 84 plus. Um, on mine, it is located above the x squared button. So 64, and then you type in the second button and the x squared button, and that should get you the square root function, which is equal to eight. Okay. To do the cubed root or the fourth root function, you need to hit the math button. Okay, and if you scroll down to number five, you should see a function that looks like this. It's a square root sign with an X there. That's the function that you want for anything that is um, not a square root function. So let's see here, 729. Oops. And the way that you use that function is to type in the power you want first, so type in the three then hit the math button, then hit the number five, and then type in the number that you want the cubed root of. Okay, so the cubed root of 729 is nine. So one more time, type in a four, hit the math button, hit the number five, and then type in 1296. Okay, and you should find that the fourth root of 1296 is equal to six. So this concludes our review of using exponents. Thank you for listening and I hope to see you again soon.